All right, it's now 28 minutes uh, to 9 o'clock and we are on to the final leg of uh, this particular show. Now, a Kenyan film based on the Mandera bus attack has been nominated for Best Live Action Short Film at the 90th Oscar Awards. The announcement was made on Tuesday, just hours before the Nairobi premiere of Watuwate, a film by three German students which has been nominated for the prestigious award slated for March 4th. The film, depicting a solidarity displayed by Muslims and Christians riding on a bus, has already won awards more than 40 prestigious film festivals around the world. The Muslims shielded Christians during the attack by Al-Shabaab militants and the bus Mandera December 21st, 2015. Let's take a look at a preview of the film that could put Kenya on the top spot. What what which was done in Kenya depicts the power of sister and brotherhood where Muslim lady risks her life to save a Christian lady and her young daughter from being massacred by the militants. The lady lives the narrative of her ordeal. And that is what to what. And now joining me in studio to have a conversation and basically just find out how they feel about it is Douglas Mungai, who is an actor. You're acting as a GSU officer. Thank you for joining us. We also have Justin Mirichi, uh, who was James Ouma, the turnboy in the bus. Yeah. Gentlemen, uh, first of all, as a Kenyan, I feel so proud that, uh, you know, a Kenyan film has been nominated. I wonder how does it feel for you who was actually acting in the film? Let's start with <laughs> you, uh, Justin. Uh, well, uh, like I've said before, it's exhilarating, really. It's, it's, it's an exciting moment because um, for a Kenyan story to actually go to the Oscars, this means a lot. And I think it's going to inspire a lot of uh, positive change and growth in the, in the Kenyan film industry. In the film industry. Yeah. All right, Douglas, your uh, thoughts as you were acting, did you ever Im imagine that it would get to a level where the film that you're in is nominated for the Oscars? Well, technically no, because I was informed that it was a student project. So I never knew that it would be entered into so many competitions and festivals and get all the accolades it got. Mm -hmm. So it was surprising and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's doing well. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, so are you both professional actors? Is this something that you do full time? Um, I'm a full time actor. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I supplement with, uh, I do voiceovers, I write. Um, yeah, but I am a full-time. Was this the first project that you have done of this scale, of this magnitude? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I have done a different project with, uh, with some, um, um, some friends from Sweden, but this, this was by far the largest The film. largest. What yeah. about yourself, Douglas? Yes, for my case, it's a bit interesting. I was actually... A former employee of KTN before I went into acting. Ah, okay. So <laughs> I, I was an engineer. Welcome here. back to Mama's <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> yeah, so since I left, I've been doing acting full time. Oh, you've been acting full time? Yes. And, and how would you uh, look at uh, act, uh, being a full time actor? Because it is somewhat new when we compare it with Nollywood, when you compare it with uh, Nigerian uh, scene, when you compare it with Hollywood. Kenya seems to be coming up pretty well, yes. but still a lot of work to be done. Your experience so far? Well, my experience is that the challenge comes in in booking constant work. That's where the <coughs> challenge is. Mm -hmm. Getting work is actually not that hard as people might tend to think. 
booking constant work and quality work, you know. Just because someone has done 10 or so projects, most of them die off. Most of them are pilots, they die off, and uh, only a few do well. So if the challenge is actually getting quality work, mm -hmm. yes. All right. And your experience, Justin? Um, yeah, well, it's been hard. I've, I've been doing it for nine years now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, I, I think it's made me a better manager of my time and finances. Um, and like he says, um, booking regular work is, is, is really the concern. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're getting to a place where opportunity is getting, you know, it's becoming more, that there are more jobs available. Some of the actors are actually getting into more production work. So I think we're heading in the right direction. All right, Douglas, let me come to you and let's go back to the film. And what Wate, first of all, just the story. When we read the story, when it happened, the real, now the, the, the actual story, it's one that left everybody impressed with the fact that we do have people that can literally risk their lives uh, despite their religious differences. What was your experience now shooting the film and maybe run us through what you learned through trying to play that role that, of, of, of something that actually happened? Well, first of all, it was, the incident was unfortunate and uh, condolences to the affected. My role as a GSE officer was basically to portray the authority figure in the society. Most Muslims get harsh treatment from the authorities because the whole Somali background. The way a Muslim, a Muslim person is treated maybe in the wee hours of the night is not the same way I will be treated. So basically I was used to promote that stereotype mm -hmm. that is put on them and that they are always on the wrong, they are planning something. So Tell, tell me about your role, um, and, and not you as Douglas, but you as now the GSU officer. Yes. What is it that you, uh, what, what was in your mind? What, how did you portray that discrimination that you're talking about? Well, first of all, uh, it was in the opening scene of the film. We, we were, basically we wrapped them up pretty bad. We, it's not the conventional way of asking someone for their ID, asking them who they are, where they are going, where they're coming from. Basically, it was a bit too rough on them because it's not human to put people in the streets mm. and pointing guns at them and uh, asking them who they are. They have rights as people. Mm. They are Kenyans. And, and, and partly because of their, uh, where they come from. Yes, because of the whole Somali background. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And, and how, what did you learn out of that? What is it that you would now speak for instance to officers who would be watching what is the lesson that you would give them after playing that role well i would urge people to be open-minded you know the whole terrorists are muslims kind of thing is outdone by now you should be open-minded on how we relate in uh, between different re religions that what I, that's what i would say Mm -hmm. yes. All right, uh, Justin, you are James Oma, yes. the boy. What yes. was your role as a boy? Um Well, essentially, I was the guy helping people on the bus, uh, you know, uh, getting luggage into the bus, uh, giving instructions, I mean, helping people out in the bus, uh, depending on what was, was required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That and was what, did, what, what did you learn out of your role? Um, well, I learned because I, I was the initial... Um, uh, contact between uh, the lady called Jua, who was played by Adeline, and um, and and uh, a Muslim character who uh, was you know. Jua the lady who was saved by the Muslim lady. Yes, yes, okay. she was the one who was saved by the by the Muslim lady actually. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was there during the first interaction, and and I could feel that um, that tension and the discrimination of of why do you want to sit next to me, mm -hmm. or I was already sitting here, why do you want me to move? which would probably not have occurred on the, on if, if the, the other person was, was um, a fellow Christian or something like that. Right. Um, so for me, it was, it was really a wake-up call. I think it's something that has been, I haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have friends who are Muslim, I have friends all over the place, and I've never quite thought of it as, as am I your, are you my friend, are you Muslim, are you Christian? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think From it's a the film, what, what do you think brings that out? Because, like you rightly put it, there are many mm -hmm. of us who interact with people of other religions. Mm -hmm. But 
Never, uh, it's not often that you will think religion first, then, yeah. you know, sort of pull yourself back. Mm -hmm. But this film brings that out in certain aspects. But also the beauty about it is that despite the religious differences, one can make a huge difference for somebody who's of a different religion. Yes, absolutely. And I remember something I spoke about when we were having some of the interviews um, after the film, is that if you don't, if you don't speak out um, when... when someone allied to you is doing the wrong thing, then you, you are deemed to be supporting it. Mm. Um, and, and, and this cuts both ways. So for the Christians, if you see Muslims being, um, be, being sidelined and you're saying nothing about it, then you're deemed to be supporting it. And that's not right. Mm. And if you're a Muslim and uh, the, you see Christians being sidelined or, or being terrorized because of their faith, or because of their, 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 their not being Muslim, then you're basically supporting that. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's time to wake up and, and, and just be more proactive. Okay. Yeah. All right, Douglas, um, what we see on the film is edited, it's cleaned up, it's put together, so we are basically seeing a finished product. Tell us about the challenges, some of those things that, <laughs> you know, we never know happens behind the scenes, and uh, here we are watching a film and thinking, you guys did a fantastic job, but I'm sure there are things that happen and you're thinking, oh my God, what's this? <laughs> okay, personally, for the <coughs> opening scene that I am in, it makes up a small percentage of the whole film, but when it came to shooting it, it took over four hours. Just how, how long is the actual scene on the film? It's about... Three minutes. Three, three minutes. Three and or less. how long did that take to shoot to get over, it together? Over four hours. Over four hours. Yes. Okay. So you can see the perfection that was put into that. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that we were in a public place, we are in Atangara. Mm -hmm. We closed out a street, so the whole commotion, people want, want to see what's going on. They see people with guns in the street. They are curious, you know, Kenyans. So those are some of the challenges. And uh, actually getting the, the permits for the firearms is, a, is another thing, the uniforms. Mm -hmm. you know, for the film, it's not such an easy thing to get such kind of props. Mm -hmm. So that's, for my experience, that's what I would say. Okay, Justin, what is it that stood out for you in terms of um, challenges? And not just the challenges that we expect. There are mm -hmm. those things that mm -hmm. happen. For instance, there are times a script has to be changed on set. Yeah. And maybe you've crammed your lines, but you're told, no, let's change that because one actor didn't show up or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of those things that just come up. Well, well, I can tell you for one that I was not in perfect health. I, I had a terrible throat infection. But, but I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, God gave me the grace to shoot uh, the entire film. Um, I think my, my challenge initially was, was um, that uh, I think for the director was communicating a lot in German with, with, the, uh, with the, the DOP. Mm -hmm. And normally I like to listen in and, and, and I, I just... Yeah. Yeah, what's, what's yeah, okay, so, so, and then try and pick up what I'm not doing right. So, for, for, for this one, I really had to be very dependent on the director, uh, which was, you know, a good lesson for me. Um, yeah, I had to be dependent on the director. Um, and uh, I, I would just say, like, for the sh scenes we shot in Magadi, it was really hot. We were shooting in the sun. And, and there's actually one scene where I, I had to be in the sun for a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. you know, take after take. So, um, yeah, but overall... Are, are there times that it gets, you know, annoying and irritating when you're doing a scene and you mm -hmm. have to keep repeating yeah. and maybe the director is not happy for one reason or the other? Are yeah. there times, you know, tempers flare and you think, what, I, I really didn't sign up for this? It's a very possible scenario. Uh, I think, however, it depends on, um, on, on what's being done. Uh, because I can tell you, for me, lying in the hot sand, face in the sand. You were lying on it? Yeah, I was wow. lying in the sand. So <laughs> it, was, it was not easy. Mm. Um, but I think as an actor, as you, as you uh, Ghana experience, you, you get used to, to expecting that you will repeat the same action over and over. Mm. And even when you, have, when you do one take and, and the director says, we have it, mm. uh, you know, you start wondering what's going on. I, yeah. I, don't, think, I don't think we're doing the right thing. Let's <laughs> yeah. do, another I need to do another one. Yeah, I need to do another one. Okay. Yeah. All right, Douglas, um, as we wind up and uh, maybe just to understand, the executive producer for this particular film, they're German students. This is a scene that happened in Kenya. It's something that happened locally. Are we getting to a point where we can have a purely local production done by Kenyans, acted by Kenyans, produced, edited, done in Kenya, and we get to a point where we have accolades like these? 
Yes, I think we can. The challenge comes in with if you because film is a, is also an investment. It's a business to most people, so they pump money into that project. Mm -hmm. So if the the returns, the return the return plans are not well laid out, it becomes a challenge. That's why most of our stories have not been done locally. They've been done by people from Hollywood and such. So the whole going to theaters culture needs to pick up mm -hmm. because that's where the returns are. You know, or maybe there could be a, an arrangement because of the whole say, a movie mm. kind of thing in Kenya. It ruins a lot of things. Maybe they could get licenses to sell the films. And if there's such kind of revenue coming from there, then people will put in time and effort and money mm -hmm. into telling such kind of stories from here. All right. Uh, Justin, your thoughts on how far we are to getting to that point and possibly what Kenya needs to do to ensure that we have full production done locally and uh, good productions as well. Uh, well, like Douglas said, there's a lot of invest investment uh, required in terms of money for uh, a film to get to this level. If you look at what water, the, the, the quality of the production is, is just amazing. People sat down, took time, invested money, time. Um, a lot of people, over 100 people. Um, so I think for us, it's basically, number one, uh, we need more investors in, in, into the film industry. Uh, we need companies, we need well-wishers. Uh, coming into the film uh, industry, uh, funding films. And then we need to understand the processes because you, do, you do just don't shoot something and then go to the Oscars and say, hey, guys, put this in for me. Mm. Um, there are processes. There, there, there are certain screenings that have to take place in, in, in very specific places. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, so I think it's something... I'm not sure how fast we're going to get there. Okay. But... It, it's possible. All right. Finally, as we close, Douglas, your advice to any actors out there and film producers? Well, to the actors, it will be good that the, the right people know you can act. You know, just, just because you can act is not enough. People need to know you can act. Use the internet to promote yourself. Have content, you know, do f some f free jobs if you can. Mm -hmm. You know, because don't, don't be too much on the, on the cash side of it and you're just starting out. You, know, you need a body of work to sell yourself. So if you can do some pro bono work, good for you. And, uh, also builds your experience. Yes, and also treat yourself as a professional. Don't let people misuse you because a lot of people don't take acting as a serious a serious that work. You're just doing, you know, yes. while you wait for jobs uh, to come. Mm. Actor to you, mm. you know, teach yourself as a professional, know your worth, know what you're good at, and focus on selling it to the world because people need to know what you're doing. That's mm. what I would say. All right, Justin, your closing comments? Uh, well, for me, I think the tide is definitely turning uh, in the film industry and in the arts in this country. Um, so this is a good time to invest. For the investors, bring in money. It's going to pay back. Mm. Um, and, and, and then I think for people in our industry, we need to understand our value. Uh, we need to keep pushing for things to be done the right way. We need to uh, you know, just work to do exemplary work. Yeah. And that's how we're going to grow this industry. Mm. Yeah, All right, no thank you very much, gentlemen. Douglas Mongai, who is an actor and was acting as a GSU officer, and Justin Mirichi, who was James Omer, the turn boy, in the film What to Water, which has been nominated for the Oscars. Congratulations, and we're wishing you all the best. Of course, as Kenya, we are looking forward to that happening. So that's where we wind up the show this morning and this week. We want to say thank you, and from a very de dedicated and committed crew that ensures Morning Express comes to you every single morning from 5 a.m. all the way till 9, we say, Thank you for watching and wish you a fabulous weekend. And before I forget, Douglas, director says we're in gear shift. Time is up for you to go back to the shift. So there you go. Have yourselves a great weekend. God bless. Do take care of yourselves and each other.